So now we can determine the, the order of magnitude of the terms. Let's assume that delta is very, very smaller than L. L, I said, is the characteristic length of the system. Maybe we can, uh, we, we can say that L depicts the length scale in the x direction. Okay, So delta, since now we are studying the boundary layer, and delta, you can say, is the length scale in the y direction. So we are assuming that uh, the boundary layer is very thin, right? This is uh, a legitimate assumption to make even in real life. Delta is very smaller than L. Then if we define a delta naught to be delta over L, this is the non-dimensional thickness, right? This thing should be much smaller than 1, which means the order of magnitude of delta naught is smaller than the order of magnitude of 1. Based on this, we can determine the order of magnitude of each term. Let's first say x naught. x naught is x over L, right? We assume this thing is of order of 1. Because I, as I have said, L depicts the length scale in the x direction. So of course, the x coordinate x will have, a, will have the same order of magnitude as this length scale. But what about y? y naught equals to y over L, right? y is the same order of magnitude as delta, right? Because y lies within the boundary layer. So we would expect this thing to be of an order of the order of delta naught. And the u, velocity u, u equals to u over u over capital U, right? The velocity in the x direction over the mainstream velocity in the x direction. This thing, these two variables are comparable, right? So this thing will give me an order of 1. So now let's look at the continuity equation. u naught, order of 1, right? x naught, order of 1. So du naught dx naught will give me a quantity which has an order of 1. Mathematically speaking, in order for two terms to add up to 0, they must have the same order of magnitude. So dv naught dy naught should also give me a quantity which has an order of 1. And here we also see that y naught has the order of delta naught, right? So in order for this term, to be of order 1, then v naught must be of the order of delta naught. So here, because dv naught dy naught uh, will give me an order of 1, then v naught should be of order delta naught. Now we move to t. t, e, t naught equals to t times u over l. We assume this thing to be order of 1. So du naught dt naught order of 1, right? u naught 1, u naught 1, x naught 1, this thing together is 1. u naught 1, u naught 1. Uh, no, here is v naught. Uh, u naught is 1, v naught is delta naught, right? This thing is delta naught. y naught is on the denominator. It's also delta naught. So this thing will give me 1 over delta naught. So together, this term will give me 1, the order of 1. So we can see that on the NS equation, in the NS equation on the left-hand side, the quantity is of order of 1, right? Here, uh, we leave the pressure for now, for a moment. The Reynolds number, we assume it to be of order 1 over uh, 1 over delta naught squared. 1 over delta naught squared. Delta naught is a sm very small number, right? So 1 over delta is a very big number. 1 over delta squared is an even larger number. So here we are assuming that the Reynolds number is very, very high, right? 
is two order of magnitude higher than our uh, length scale, let's say. So uh, we are considering a boundary layer where the Reynolds number is very high. Just keep this in mind. So here, 1 over Reynolds will give me a quantity of order delta naught squared, right? u naught again, 1. x naught is 1. This thing is 1. u naught, 1. Delta, uh, y naught, y naught, y naught, delta naught. So this thing, 1 over delta naught squared. We can see this term gives me delta naught squared, but this term gives me order of 1, right? Now the third equation, v naught t naught, t naught is 1, v naught is delta naught, this thing is delta naught, 1, 1, delta naught, together delta naught, delta naught, delta naught, delta naught, together delta naught, right? This thing, I leave it for a moment, Reynolds again, delta naught squared, delta naught squared, and this thing, one uh, delta naught. This is one, right? So this thing gives me delta naught. Delta naught, delta naught squared. One over delta naught. Okay, so now, as I have said, we can neglect the terms which have, uh, which have a lower order of magnitude compared with the order of one. We are considering uh, the quantities, we are only considering the quantities in an order of 1 or higher. Obviously, we don't have higher order terms here. So we just need to uh, neglect the lower order terms, right? What are the, which are the lower order terms? For example, you see here, this thing, as I have said, will give me delta naught squared, right? The whole equation is in a scale of what? In, a, in an order of what? Of 1, because the left hand side together give, gives me a quantity of 1. So this part can be neglected, but this part cannot be neglected, right? Because delta naught squared times 1 over delta naught squared, this quantity will be of order 1. Also, we see the uh, AS equation in the y direction. Delta naught, delta naught, delta naught. So this equation basically has an order of magnitude of delta naught, right? We see on the right hand side this thing gives me delta naught cubed, right? It's even a smaller number than delta naught. So obviously this part can be neglected. This part also gives me delta naught, right? So if the equation is uh, depicts a phenomenon in the scale in the order of magnitude of delta naught, then this thing must give me an order of magnitude that is smaller than or equal to the order of delta naught, right? It cannot be, uh, let's just write it this way. It's smaller than or equal to the order of delta naught. It cannot be larger, otherwise the uh, the order of magnitude on both sides won't be uh, matched, right? But here, since the whole order of magnitude of this equation is delta naught, we can basically throw out this equation entirely. Why is that? It's like we are considering two elephants, and here, we see that two ends are equal. Do we need to consider the two ends? We do not, right? Although this may be a fact, but we, uh, uh, this, this thing just uh, does not interest us. So basically this equation, we can, uh, we, don't, we do not need to consider it anymore. We just uh, keep this in mind that uh, dp naught, dy naught is a very, very small number, right? And here, uh, and finally, our equation will be what? Since this equation we can neglect, then we are only left with two equations, 
right? So du naught, dx naught plus dv naught, dy naught equals to zero. And the ns equation in the x direction uh, will give us du naught dt naught plus u naught du naught d uh, x naught plus v naught d u naught d y naught. This thing will be uh, one over uh, mi minus d p naught d x naught plus one over Reynolds. Remember the first term. Uh, is neglected. So we are only left with the second term, d squared u naught dy naught squared. And the third equation, we can throw it away entirely.